Today, let's talk about how you can get into your dream university. Why the hell am I qualified to talk about this? Well, I was accepted into Stanford in 2018. I thought it was my dream university, but then I changed my mind. I was also accepted into the London School of Economics, University College London, and King's College London, all top 10 universities according to the QS University World Rankings. Finally, I was accepted into Boston University, one of the most prestigious college institutions in the United States. And well, I've actually applied to over 20 universities, be it in initial applications or transfer applications, so I think I kind of know the gist of it. But I really want to share some tips that really allowed me to get into many of these universities and some of my dream universities that I wanted to get into and allow you to do exactly the same. And believe me, these are not superficial tips. These are three very actionable things that I think are crucial and I've never found them anywhere on the internet. I've researched and researched and researched universities for a very long time. Again, I've applied to over 20 universities throughout my entire life and none of this information is publicly available as far as I'm concerned. I've never seen this on any college blog or YouTube video or any other place. These are important things that I learned going along the way, making really bad mistakes and then kind of making some better, better mistakes as I went on, but these are incredibly actionable items. But before we get into it, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Diego, this is Apex of Man. I'm an undergraduate student studying business and computer science at Boston University. And if you're obsessed with productivity and self-development and you're a student, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you don't miss a single video, new videos out every week. Let's go. So before we jump into the three tips, I wanna give a quick disclaimer on grades. Grades are crucial. Grades are absolutely necessary, and if you do not have the grades necessary to get into one of these institutions, be it Harvard, MIT, Stanford, Cambridge, Oxford, whatever, you will not get in, or it will be very, very hard for you to get in. Grades are one of the few ways to actually separate a population and gauge different levels of competence, at least academically. This is especially true in the UK system, because the UK system, is based on conditional offers. So your acceptance into a university depends on the grades that you get at the end of high school exams. However, the United States has a more holistic system that takes into account extracurriculars, passion projects, and your individual profile as a person. Even in the United States, grades are absolutely crucial. And if you do not have the necessary grades to get into these universities, good luck. A great place to start and gauge if you're actually competitive to get into Harvard or Cambridge is the average profile of accepted students that the university releases every single year. They have information on grades, demographics, extracurriculars, on all these other things that make up the profile of the average accepted student into that institution. So be sure to check these out. They're publicly available on any website, the MIT website, the Harvard website, all these places release these average profile packages and be sure to check it out before you start deluding yourself into thinking that maybe I'll have a chance of applying and maybe if I spend the time and this and that, you want to gauge and be realistic if you can actually get into these universities before taking that leap, before taking that jump. I mean, taking the leap, if you want to take it and pay the fee for the application, that's fine, but don't create false expectations in terms of where you can actually get to if your grades are not where they need to be. And even though this is not a video on getting good grades, we can do that at some other point, I wanted to give you a few tips in terms of navigating the UK versus the US educational system and how to maximize your chance of being in those top percentile grades to get into the university of your dreams or your top choice. So for the United States, make sure you research about the SAT as well as the ACT. Be sure to play to your advantages. The SAT is more wordy. It's a little more based on English and, and natural logic as opposed to the ACT that as far as I understand it is a little more science based. These are two necessary exams to get you through the gate and that kind of standardize the grades of everybody going into the universities into, in the United States system. So be sure to play to your advantages, play to your strength and make sure to research the differences between these two exams and then choose the one where you're gonna be the most successful and most effective. I, for example, took the SAT and I would highly, highly recommend the college prep SAT package. It costs around 400 bucks, but it uses algorithms and AI to target your training and truly allow you to understand the types of questions that come in the SAT, especially those really strange English questions in terms of logic and reasoning and grammatics. So I truly recommend college prep. It's usually cheaper than any university counselor and 400 bucks for the value that you're getting and for being able to increase your SAT grade by quite a hefty margin as they claim in their website. It's an absolute no brainer. And in terms of the UK system, a tip that I wanted to give you is something that I personally made a mistake on and I wanted to share on how to not make that mistake, that you really make sure you understand your conditional offer. 
your conditional offer are those grades that you need to get by the end of high school to actually be accepted into the university. So be sure to understand the contract that they give you because sometimes it's a little convoluted and a little wordy and they give certain exceptions and certain loopholes to certain grade requirements that you need to achieve. However, I truly recommend that you remain in constant contact with your university as soon as you get this conditional offer and try to negotiate those grades down. Tell them that you do this many extracurriculars and that you would like to be involved in this club in their university and that you would bring this value to the university and that you're a really good fit for the culture and you've done your EPQ, which is essentially a thesis that you do at the end of high school. So make sure you're in constant communication with your university, make sure you negotiate with them and see if you can actually bring those grades down or at least you know, get on their good books and, and make them even more excited to have you and maybe they'll, they'll come around in the long run. Now let's get on to the actual tips. Number one, focus on depth, not breadth. This is incredibly important because universities are looking for excellence and greatness in one single area. It is very, very difficult to be excellent in a hundred different things, but it's much easier to be excellent in one thing, dedicate a lot of time and effort to it, show the impact that you've brought to your community, to your friends, to your family, to your club. So focus on becoming the master of one really, really cool thing. This can be a sport, this can be an extracurricular, this can be an instrument, this can be dancing, this can be volunteering, this can be a side hustle, this can be actually building a business, this can be so many different things but you need to focus on one thing where you can actually excel at. And I'm gonna to link to this TED talk, essentially called Harvard is Hard, where it breaks down kind of the profiles of individuals who are accepted into Harvard and into these elite institutions and what exactly they're doing in terms of their extracurriculars and all of those things. So I truly, truly suggest you check it out, link in the description. But you may be asking Diego, how exactly do I excel in one single thing? And I truly understand, it's really hard to kind of find that thing, but I suggest that you employ the Ikigai framework. This is a Japanese framework for choosing the most appropriate and effective action, judging it on three different levels. Number one, what are you good at? Number two, what are you passionate about? And number three, adapted to our case, what will produce the most amount of value to enter into that dream university? So make this is a sort of three circles that converge in a Venn diagram. And it is incredibly important to have depth, not breadth, because when it comes to writing about these experiences and when it comes to filling your resume or your CV, you need to show impact. You need to show numbers and how you've affected, influenced, and brought value to other individuals, be it your family, your community, your sports club. So without having that time and effort and that depth, it's impossible to have something of value that you can actually describe and tell a story about it. So make sure to focus on depth, not breadth. Number two, connect with an insider at a university. Start building relationships with people at that university. Maybe they're friends who are at that university currently. Maybe it's family who has attended the institution. Maybe it's someone you know, or the cousin of the cousin of the cousin that is a professor there. Maybe it's an ex-alumni from your high school, whatever it is, but start building a relationship with an insider early on. Take the time to build that relationship. Why is this important? Because when it comes to deciding who is gonna be accepted into a university, who's gonna be accepted to Harvard or MIT, the people who are being judged are almost on the same level academically, or almost on the same level extracurricularly. So they have a great grades, they have amazing extracurriculars, amazing volunteering experiences, they have absolutely killer profiles. So it becomes a sort of lottery. Maybe you get to the door, but then it, it's essentially a game of chance. No matter how good you are, there's gonna be someone who's a lot better than you, and it's essentially a game of chance. So a good word put in by an insider at the university goes a hell of a long way. And that is how I believe I got into Stanford because a friend of my father's who had attended Stanford put in a good word for me, and that is how I believe I was accepted. Not only that, but when I was accepted into Boston University, two of my family members had already attended the institution, and I believe that is a huge reason why I was able to be accepted by Boston University, one of these elite institutions. So be sure to start building a relationship. Maybe, maybe you don't have any friends, maybe you don't have any family, but how exactly can you do this? You can use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a really, really powerful social connection tool, kind of professional networking tool that I use for many, many things. And if you're starting out and thinking of applying to university, make sure to get a LinkedIn account and start looking for people at that university that you connect with on a certain level. Maybe they went to your high school. You can filter that. You can filter that on LinkedIn. You can even filter through keywords. Maybe you really enjoy skiing and this person went to that university and is a passionate skier and they have that in their LinkedIn profile. 
You can look for people. It's very, very detailed. It's a little creepy, but it's a wonderful way to start building that relationship and build that relationship soon. Make sure you have something in common. That way you can reach out and tell them, hey, look, I wanted to connect with you on LinkedIn. I'm interested in attending this university. I know you've been. We connect uh, in this sort of way. I thought it would be interesting to talk to you. Give me your experience and then start building that relationship bit by bit by bit. Be deliberate about it. So keep in contact during quite some time and then you build that relationship and maybe they know someone in the admissions office or maybe they can put in a good word with one of with the dean of something and that will go a hell of a long way not only that but maybe they're still in university or maybe they are part of the alumni network at that university and once you get accepted you will already have a relationship built you already have a friendship or a professional relationship that you can rely on that you can trust and that you can build upon once you get accepted into that university. So it's necessary that you do this and I've never seen anybody recommend this on the internet. And number three, detail is king. Detail is necessary in your application and your interviews because it shows that you're passionate about the institution and you're knowledgeable about what you wanna study, where you wanna study, what you're gonna do there, what extracurriculars are gonna be involved in and all of these other corollary things that university brings to the table. Of course, Harvard, MIT, Cambridge, Oxford, all of these universities have great professors, have great extracurriculars, have a great atmosphere, competitive environment. You want to delve a lot deeper. You want to write in your application that you're really interested in taking Professor Smith's class on cultural anthropology because it combines your passion for economics and your passion for biology. Participate in perhaps ungraded research opportunities with Professor Lupin on, on werewolves or whatever. Or maybe you're interested in a certain club where you think you can bring value in this way and be really, really specific about it. Show numbers, show passion, show detail in applications and in the interviews when it comes to interviewing you, people call your bluffs really, really easily. If you did your homework, if you've done your research and you know about the institution you're applying to, that will set you apart. That will set you apart because not many people put in that work. Not many people are willing to spend those hours researching and distilling information and truly seeing the details and going through the syllabuses and going through the extracurriculars and contacting the president of the entrepreneurship club at Harvard before they go in and, and understanding what is going on and how they can bring value. So make sure you put detail into your application and your interviews. It's necessary to be able to have a chance to get into your dream university. Again, how can you discover really in-depth details? The first place is the website. It's some superficial information, but it's a good place to start. It's a good foundation. And then what can you do? Use LinkedIn again. Contact people directly at the university and ask them questions like, what is the best or worst thing about the university? Who has been your favorite professor and why? What information can you tell me that is not on the website? What information or tips or insider knowledge can you give me about this university that's not on the website so I can include it in my application? Make sure to contact these people. Many, many universities have a lot of resources available of students that are actually willing to talk to prospective students and give them all of this information, this knowledge. People are generally, generally very, very friendly. So do reach out, get them on a call, get them on Zoom so you can see them face to face. It's crucial, absolutely necessary. It'll build a good rapport. So those were the three crucial tips that I learned making crazy mistakes and stupid mistakes and then making better mistakes and how I was able to get into Stanford, into UCL, into King's College London, into London School of Economics, into Boston University and a lot of universities that I've applied to. Again, I've made a lot of mistakes, so I wanted to share these things that I learned and hopefully you won't make the same mistakes or make them a little better. And if you're applying right now, I truly wish you the best of success. And if not, these are things that you can apply to other applications, to jobs, to internships, to many other things, because these are kind of universal laws and universal things that, that will help you in terms of getting the position or getting into a, an institution that you want to get to. And if you're still hanging around here, thank you very much for getting to the end of the video. If you're interested in more content like this, be sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss a single video. Leave a like and comment. Be sure to check this one out on the top five books every student needs to read to absolutely crush 2021. And check this one on how I overcame my video game addiction in college. Thank you very much for your support. See you in the next video.